Hey guys, Mario Semino here and welcome to part two of the Private Blog Network Masterclass. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to host your expired domains. So we went out there in the first video and I showed you guys some resources on where to find expired domains and why you would wanna buy an expired domain in the first place. I kind of covered what a private blog network is and why you need one to rank in SEO. So just another reminder, guys, if you go to link-bound.com slash PBN Masters, you can join our Facebook group where we're talking about how to build PBNs and constantly updating this course and making changes to the new Google algorithms and things to make you rank faster. We'll all discuss you know, SEO and private blog network and possibly some internet marketing in general. So the first step you're going to need to do is find a host when you go out and want to host your expired domain. It's very important that when you go out there, you get a different host for every single domain that you buy. Now remember, there's the host and then there's the registrar. The registrar is where you would pay to register the domain. Your host is where you're setting up shop or where you're hosting that domain. So you need a different host for every domain. Now this is different from the registrar. If you remember in video one, I said that you can have tons of domains on one registrar, but for hosting, you need a different host for every domain. You need to vary the type of hosting. So there's shared hosting, there's cloud hosting, there's dedicated IP hosting, and don't confuse dedicated IP hosting with dedicated hosting. Dedicated hosting is very expensive. It's usually when you have a very large website that's receiving a lot of traffic. You don't need a dedicated host, but you need a dedicated IP. So the way you get a dedicated IP is you usually pay about $4.99, and it depends on the host. So, like I said, you want to vary the type of hosting you use, because if you use the same hosting on every single one of your domains, then it's very obvious to Google that you're creating a network of websites to just point back to yourself. You're going to see a lot of advertisements, especially when you get into this, um, for SEO hosting. Basically what SEO hosting is, is they're taking the IP address of the host and they're giving it a different class C. So if you were to look at an IP address, I can just write it right here. You guys would see something like this. Now, this is A class, B class, and C class, and then D class. So you want hosts that have different C classes. That's what the SEO hosts will do. They'll take one IP address, but then they'll just change up the C class on, on all different um, domains that you put with their hosting. But what we do when we buy you know, one maybe from Bluehost, maybe one from HostGator, from Web Hosting Pad, is we're changing up the IP entirely on several levels. So we might change up the first level, we might change up the second level or the class B. So you're getting all different types of IP addresses. This is very important. Now, you wanna use a different persona on every host. So if you remember back in day one, I said that you want to create a creative persona using fake name generator.com. I said we're going to be using this when we register the domain and when we're setting up hosting. So right now we're setting up the hosting and we need that fake persona. So I went out there and I actually bought a, I'm going to stay logged in here, went out and bought an expired domain. The domain is ablevetenterprises.com and I was looking for something in like construction or maintenance or roofing and things like that. So I went out there and I registered the domain and as you can see I have privacy on. I regist registered it with GoDaddy and I created a fake name or a fake persona, James F. Jimenez and um, it gives me his phone number and remember this is fake, this is not a real person. This is just so you can uh, register it safely. Now. Usually what you would do is you would go to contacts and you would put all of that fake name persona here. But since I have who is privacy enabled, then this is totally fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a host, which I already did. I went to bluehost.com and I signed up for their $3 package, which is a single host. And we are now in the C panel, as you can see here, I'm in the C panel. So when you first sign up for a host, they're going to send you an email. So this is an example one from HostGator. It says, thank you for your order with HostGator and you can log into the billing system here if you need to pay. They got your password, the plan you chose, 
But the most important is your control panel or your C panel. You'll hear this over and over again. C panel stands for control panel. The domain that they're using and the name servers. So that's the reason why I put the arrow here. It's very important that you look for the name servers. So what you're gonna do once you get that email from the host. Now, you're gonna have to buy several different hosts and remember you're gonna have to put them under a unique persona for every host that you buy. Is you're gonna wanna point the domain that you bought from your registrar. So GoDaddy, Namecheap, whatever. And you're gonna wanna set the name servers for your host. So as you saw, I'm using Bluehost and the name server for this is for Bluehost is ns1.bluehost.com and the second name server is ns2.bluehost.com. So inside the registrar, we need to change the name servers to point at that host and we need to wait like 15 minutes. Uh, sometimes it can take up to 24 hours, so be patient if it doesn't work right away. But I did this already. If you see here in domain details, I'm inside my manager for the GoDaddy registrar. I set the name servers, if we click manage, to Bluehost, NS1, and NS2. So essentially this is like pointing it to the host. This is pointing it to the home base or the host. So now if we were to visit this URL, it really wouldn't be anything there because it's just an empty host. So what we need to do is we need to first go to the C panel, like I said, control panel. And remember, I, I just want to clarify this, um, and I know I've, I'm repeating myself, but the host is where you're hosting your website and the registrar is where you're registering your website. So don't get those confused. So the C panel is located on the host. And what we need to do is update the contact info to fit the persona that we created. So we're gonna go back over here to cPanel and we're gonna look for anything where we can edit the information of who this belongs to. So we got domain management, uh, we have upgrades, professional services, security, preferences, update billing info, change language, it should be there. So if we let this load and go to the billing info, we can see that right now it's under my name, Mario Semino, and um, my phone number and everything. So what we want to do is we want to take the persona that we created, which was James F. Jimenez. And we want to get the company name that even has that there. The serendipity dip. We want to get his address. Let's see where it is. Geo coordinates, email address, physical characteristics. Okay, let's um, go to Google. And we're going to type in random address generator. So we can say that he's from Minnesota. I believe it is there somewhere. I just didn't see it where he's from. Oh yeah, right there below his name. So you don't even need to use that random address generator. And he's from Burlington, Iowa. Okay, so we would take the email address that we purchased. If you remember, we purchased uh, 50 phone verified accounts from that Fiverr creator, and we would put that email address in there. So anything related to this, we would receive updates for it. And you could just click update. And I'm just gonna cancel this for now. So now that our cPanel is under our persona, our hosting is under our persona, and our registrar is under our persona, we're good to go.